to learners welcome to the course application of biotechnology so biotechnology is the use of living system and organism to develop or make useful products it has application in four major areas such as healthcare agriculture industry and environment so the first application in agriculture biotechnology is the haploid plant production we know that haploid plant it has a single set of chromosome so haploid plants are produced by the anther culture anther culture is the technique of growing the excised anthers which are the part of the male reproductive structure that is stamen and they are grown on the nutrient media from the anthers there are microspores in the anthers which develop into the callus or the embryoids and from that callus plantlets are regenerated is plantlets are plantlets are haploids and these haploid plantlets are useful in developing homozygous lines which are genetically pure then next what is androgenesis androgenesis is the in vitro regeneration of the haploid plantlets from the pollen grains it has two types that is direct androgenesis and indirect androgenesis in direct androgenesis pollen grains behaves like a zygote and directly forms the embryoids and from these embryoids the plantlets are regenerated in the suitable medium in indirect androgenesis pollen grains develop from the callus pollen grains develop into the callus and from that callus haploid plantlets are developed Androgenesis can be accomplished by two methods that is anther culture and the pollen culture. In the anther culture, the anthers are excised from the flower bud. That anthers are then surface sterilized with the 70% alcohol and 1% sodium hypochlorite. And after self surface sterilization, these anthers are plated on the MS medium, solid MS medium. These anthers are grown into the embryoids after few days. These embryoids are then transferred into the MS medium in the test tubes. And these plantlets are regenerated and are then transferred into the pods. Pollen culture, the excised anthers are homogenized and filtered through the nylon sieve to remove the anther wall debris. Then the pollens are extracted. The pollens are then centrifuged at 500 to 800 rpm for 5 minutes. Then supernatant is discarded and the pollen pellets are suspended in the fresh basal liquid medium. Finally, the mixed pollens with the measured volume of liquid medium is sprayed on the sterile petri dish. And it is sealed with the paraffin and incubated at 27 to 30 degrees Celsius under 500 lux. After 30 days, the young embryoids appear and from this young embryoids are then recultured in the solidified MS medium and we get the plantlets. These are the photographs of the anther culture. In this photograph first the anthers are grown on basal medium. The callus is developed and from that callus a shoot and root is generated. The plantlets generated are then transferred into the solidified MS medium. After 30 days, the mature plants are then repotted into the pots and the hardening is done and it is ready for the field. Then we will discuss the advantages of anther culture. The first advantage is the overcrowding of the pollen grains and unwanted growth of the anther wall is eliminated in the medium the androgenesis can be observed from a single cell that is the stages can be observed pollen is the ideal for the transformation and mutagenic studies more haploids are regenerated by the micropropagation technique then importance of anther culture and the pollen culture <clears throat> these are very helpful in mutation studies in plant breeding programs, in cytogenetic studies, haploid germplasm bank, 
secondary metabolite production and for production of the clones the next application in the agriculture biotechnology is the protoplast culture the principle of plant protoplast culture is the aseptic isolation of the large protoplast and culture them on the medium the isolation of protoplast is done by the uh, sequential stages a suitable material that is lip mesophyll is selected from that lip mesophyll a removal of cell wall without damage is done then once the cells are stabilized using the inert sugar mannitol hypotonic solution the protoplasts are isolated by removing the cell wall either mechanically and enzymatically the removal of cell wall is done by two methods that is mechanical method and enzymatic method in the mechanical method it involves the breaking of each cell compartment carefully under the microscope microscope using microscalpel by this method very few protoplasts are obtained for a lot of time and efforts isolated protoplasts are immediately used in the culture program in the next enzymatic method this is the more efficient way of protoplast isolation in this method cell wall is degraded by the enzymes such as cellulose pectinase and macrolide this method provides large number of protoplast within a short period of time the isolated protoplast can be cultured in several ways our agar embedding technique is all petri dish is com commonly followed this techniques is described below the isolated protoplast are suspended in the basal liquid medium like ms medium the density of 1 into 10 to the power 5 protoplast per ml the solid solidified agar of a sealed petri dish is melted and cooled then next to this medium we should add 1.5 ml of protoplast suspension petri dish it is then inverted and incubated at 25 degrees celsius with 16 hours of light period and about 500 lux periodically on the same but newly prepared medium the importance of protoplast culture the protoplast culture has far reaching application in fundamental studies and applied research in experimental biology somatic hybridization genetic engineering and somatic cell genetics some applications are below the effect of environmental factors on the osmotic behavior of the cell can be studied using protoplast culture it is also useful in establishing the role of indole acetic acid in the cell elongation the biochemical and biophysical aspects of photosynthesis can be studied by protoplast culture it is best studied for the high efficiency of gene transfer techniques the exploitation of genetic variability of cultured cells can be studied it is used for the production of somatic hybrids between distinctly related species and we can generate a hybrid of a different species the in vitro fusion of plant protoplast derived either from somatic cell of same plant or from two genetically different plants is called as somatic hybridization in somatic hybridization the protoplast fusion and somatic hybridization is based on the isolation of the protoplast of different species here the protoplast is isolated from two different species that is potato plant and tomato plant and this protoplast are then fused in the presence of fusogenic agents like polyethylene glycol to form a heterocaryon that is a protoplast containing a two different nuclei then that heterocaryon is grown on medium and we get the hybrid colonies that hybrid colonies are planted on media and we get the hybrid callus and from that hybrid callus the plantlets are regenerated which have the characteristic of both species the plant protoplast fusion is a physical phenomenon during the fusion two or more protoplasts came in contact and adhere with one another either spontaneously or in the presence of fusion inducing chemicals after the adhesion membranes of protoplasts fuse in some localized areas and eventually the cytoplasm of two protoplasts intermix there are two different types of fusion first is spontaneous fusion and induced fusion in spontaneous fusion 
During the isolation, the protoplast fuses spontaneously. Simple physical contact is sufficient to bring a similar parental protoplast. It is the little significance in the somatic hybridization. However, it is important in cytological studies such as study on the structure and function of plasmodesmata, mitosis, nuclear fusion. In the second type, that is in induced fusion, the fusion of protoplast, isolated protoplast from different sources with the help of fusion-inducing chemical agents is done. There are three types of induced fusion, that is mechanical fusion, chemofusion, and electrofusion. In mechanical fusion, in this method, protoplast brought into close contact under the microscope using micro manipulate. In chemofusion, several chemicals are used to induce the protoplast fusion, like sodium nitrate, polyethylene glycol, calcium ions, polyvinyl alcohol, and these chemicals are called as fusogens. In third type, that is electrofusion, electrical stimulation is used to fuse the protoplast. Two glass micro electrodes are placed in contact with protoplast suspension in the beaker. Subsequent application of electric current for the some time results in the breakdown of the membrane fusion. And what are the and what are the importance of protoplast fusion? This technique is used to improve the plant species through the hybrid production and thereby widens the genetic base of plant breeding. This method is used for combining different genomes. It is used to overcome the sexual incompatibility barrier between the two species. Cytoplasmic male sterility is transferred through the protoplast fusion to the somatic hybrids. The fusion products provide the information about the compatibility of the nuclei and the cytoplasm. 